What's up everyone? All right, so in this episode, I'm gonna talk about meme stocks in 2021. This is something that I didn't see coming at all. I mean, no, probably, I don't know, maybe, maybe someone did, but I, I certainly didn't. Uh, 2020 was a great year for me. I'm gonna start this by saying my results are not typical. My experience trading has not been typical. You should assume as a beginner trader that you will lose money. And if you're trading meme stocks, you should definitely assume that you will lose money. So I would urge extreme caution when it comes to trading. Only trade with money you can afford to lose because trading is very risky. Okay, so with that said, 2020 uh, was a great year for me. It was an extremely atypical year. I did not expect to do as well as I did. If you wanna learn more about my 2020 trading year, I have other videos where I talk specifically about that. But I finished with um, about four, $5 million of gross profit, about 4. I don't know, 7 million or something, 4.8 million in net profit. So it was, a, it was a crazy, crazy good year for me. And I sort of thought that uh, in December as um, you know, we were still obviously dealing with COVID, uh, but people were starting to get vaccinated and it was starting to look like maybe things are gonna turn the corner soon, that 2021 would probably be quite a bit softer and slower than 2020. And then we had GameStop. And so I have the GameStop chart up um, right here, as you can see. GameStop uh, was, I guess, the, um, is the, the ultimate meme stock. Uh, and so this is topical today, meme stocks, because I traded Clove and Clove um, was a uh, popular stock on the um, on Reddit, on Wall Street Bets. And I traded it yesterday and today. And today I made, uh, I'm up 30,000 on it, $19,650 right here. Yesterday I made about 10,000 on it. So I, I've done well trading this stock, but as you see right now, it's actually sold off quite a bit today from a high of 29 down to 20. So it's important to understand um, how, well, there's different ways to trade this, but I'm gonna share with you the ways that I trade it. And notice how it tapped right there, that yellow line. I had that line drawn yesterday. So that's technical analysis. Recognizing that that was a possible place to anticipate a bounce uh, is really important because you could have, of course, taken a, a dip trade there or expected some level of support or covered a short position there. So I'm gonna talk about how I apply technical analysis to meme stocks, which is sort of challenging because they seem to drive independent of fundamentals and in some ways independent of technicals as well. But you can apply technical analysis and I'll show you a little bit about how I've done that. So um, I'll also say that for my students at Warrior Trading, our Warrior Pro students, I did a full case study on GameStop specifically. It was a really long video. It had lots of live trading archives of me actually trading GameStop in and out of the move. Maybe I'll show a couple of them during this video, but um, I have a lot of things like that that are for Warrior Pro students. But for those out there on YouTube, I, I wanna share with you my two cents on these meme stocks. So let's go back to GameStop. So January, GameStop, um, as you probably know, had a short interest over 100%. It was around 120%, 130%. And what that means is that, uh, for those that are not super familiar with how these stocks work, uh, when a company does an initial public offering, they sell shares onto the open market. And so, for instance, if a company sells 100 million shares onto the open market, then they have a float, it's called a float, of 100 million shares from that point forward. So anytime we're trading, we're buying shares from someone who's selling, and someone who's selling is selling them to someone who's buying. So the shares are trading in a closed market. There's not more shares being created unless the company uh, specifically discloses that they are uh, doing a what's called a secondary offering, which is selling more shares on the market. And both GameStop and AMC have, have done this. It's a way to raise more money. You know, you sell, you write more shares, you sell them, and then you know you raise money from the sale, the proceeds. So, anyways. Um, on GameStop, the float on GameStop, I wanna say is like 58 million shares, but let me just get you um, the stats on that. So GameStop, well, that, and then of course they've done the secondary offering. So now the, the float's probably a bit higher, but I think at the time, um, well, let's just say 58 million shares, for instance. Uh, maybe it's a little higher or lower. So 58 million shares. So if the short interest is 100%, that means every single share that's out there is actually being held short against the company. If you're short, you're betting that the stock goes lower because you'll cover it for a lower price. In fact, you're probably hoping the stock, the company goes bankrupt so you can cover it for basically pennies on the dollar. And so what, what happened in uh, the case of GameStop was that uh, through last year and even the preceding years, GameStop has had a difficult 
um, you know, a difficult time maintaining a, a good stock price. And, and a lot of that has been related to the fact that they are kind of a, you know, old school uh, brick and mortar business in a lot of ways. You know, GameStop's usually in the plaza with a Walmart or a tractor supply store or whatever. And with more and more people getting things just through streaming, uh, the, the sort of value offering that GameStop had so long had uh, has declined. And so from a high in 2013 of $57 a share, just for instance, um, you know, and a high back in 2007 of $59 a share, uh, during the height of the recession, everyone's buying games because, hey, I can't work. At least I might as well play video games. So funny how they have that inverse relationship. Overall market drop and GameStop going up. Uh, but in any case, so um, it, it was down to like $4 a share, heavily shorted by some big, 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 big money hedge funds. And you might ask, how can a company or how can a, um, a stock be short more shares than actually exist? And that's through the process of lending. So if you short a million shares at $20 and then you lend those shares to someone else, you're doubled short because now two people have a short position on the stock, it's it's kind of a, a crazy. It, so it's something that maybe regulation will look into after this move. But uh, in any case, it's something that has been um, allowed. So GameStop starts to squeeze up in uh, January, and when it first started to squeeze up, I, I wasn't really that interested. I, I was kind of like, I don't know, it's GameStop. This isn't a stock that I've really ever liked trading. It's it's choppy. It's thickly traded. There's a lot of big hedge funds and institutional traders that are interested in it. Typically, this isn't something I would expect a lot of momentum from. Uh, but then on the day where it squeezed from 45 up to $75, I was like, okay, I have to start participating in this because clearly there's some really serious volatility. And from there, it just went higher and higher. And so I, like many others, began following, uh, you know, what people were saying on the Reddit forum, Wall Street Bets. You know, what what is what's the consensus over there? And the consensus was this is going to, uh, this is going to destroy a couple of hedge funds that were betting against a good American company. And, uh, you know, let's let's show them. That was the let's show them kind of attitude I was seeing on, um, on, on Wall Street bets. So what's interesting about this is that, you know, this move right here is very violent. I mean, I'll put it on full screen and I'll just clear out all these lines. These are my, I, I draw these uh, lines just to uh, kind of, this is technical analysis, so I'll start drawing them on as uh, we go into this a little bit deeper. But, uh, you know, so you had this crazy move here from $42 all the way up to 480 bucks, And on this day right here, it had a high of 480 and a low of $112. That was one of the most violent um, reversals I had ever seen. It was, um, the sell-off was unprecedented. The bounce was crazy. It was just insane. So there's sort of two ways that I've seen people trading these meme stocks. And the Wall Street bets strategy seems to be um, to, you know, take out a student loan or to do a cash advance on a credit card and put all of that money into a way out of the money options contract, which has a probably 95% chance of expiring worthless. And then, you know, you have so many people to do it uh, and the stock gets fueled up and everyone gets excited. And all of a sudden you have these people who are talking about having turned $10,000 into like 200 grand, which is a lottery ticket type of trade. I mean, it happened on GameStop for people, but it also happened for some people that they bought it at 250, 280, 300 and 400, 500 and are perhaps still holding it uh, deep under water. I mean, what, you know, this is a market where money can be made. And of course, money can also be lost in equal amounts. So um, you have to be very mindful of that. So in any case, we had this first sort of crazy squeeze up to 483 of regular trading hours, and then all the way back down to 48. And then people started buying it up down here, back off support, and this thing ripped back up to over 200. And then right here up to 348, and then just uh, yesterday, it hit a high of 345. So now as we open up the chart a little bit more, we're starting to see that this thing is creeping back up quite a bit. And so some of the people that bought down here in, the, in this area, I'll just highlight it like this. So some of the people that bought down in this area are sitting very nicely. 
as it's up, you know, almost tenfold from the, the 40s, you know, if it gets to 400, tenfold. The people that bought down in this area are doing really well, up almost 100%. I mean, it's, it's kind of mind-boggling. Uh, there was an article about $10,000 put into the S&P 500 at the beginning of the year would be worth like 11000 right now. $10,000 put into um, GameStop at $19. <laughs> I mean, you could have, depending on where you sold it or depending on whether or not you're still holding it, um, you know, you're talking about $200,000 plus. Dollars. It's, it's insane. And that's not even trading options. But I don't want you to think that trading is easy because it's, it's not. A lot of people lost on this. And um, so my approach was to try to apply the technical analysis that I, that I know and that I use on a you know, daily basis for my trading to find ways to trade um, you know, this, this type of stock. And that, was, uh, that has been a challenge at times, but uh, m- more, than, more than not, I've been able to do well on it. And I've definitely come out on top on GameStop, even though I've given back some gains here and there. So let me just, um, let me just show you, I am going to show a couple um, maybe live trades on this, but but first maybe let me just break down. I'm just trying to find maybe like a, a, a day where I had some lines drawn in here. So so we we start to get some of this um, some of this stuff dialed in. Oops. Uh, do, do, do. I know that the charts almost look like a spider web. It's just kind of so crazy. But this was when we were actually um, hitting the high of five hundred and twelve dollars. I mean, this was this was crazy. So for me, right here, uh, I did wake up at uh, four in the morning to trade this squeeze up to five hundred dollars. So right in here, and, and I know, like I said, it's it's kind of crazy looking the way the chart is. But what I was looking at was um, the previous day's high and resistance right around this area here. Right around this area, we had some resistance, right? The candles had hit that level. These are candlestick charts. They kind of hit that level and pulled back. And then it came back up, you know, close to that level after hours. And it started to pop back up to that area again pre-market. And so I thought that if it broke through the high right here of this green candle, if we broke through that level, then our, which is basically the same as this level here, then our next target would be to break through this level. And if we broke through this level here, then we're looking at a move to all-time highs. And boy, did we get it. This thing squeezed from $380 to 400 420 430 440 all the way up to a high of $513. It then drops all the way back down to 410 comes back all the way up to 498 pulls back and then at the open sells off down to 260 a 50% drop 50% drop and then off that drop it pops all the way back from 260 up to 480 and then it comes all the way back down here to 112 and then bounces up to 370 this is absolutely crazy now if you had taken the approach of uh, for instance, buying options on it. One of the things with options that's really unfortunate is that you cannot trade them pre-market or after hours. So if you had had the $500 calls, for instance, and you know, you're know you watching this go from 380 to 450 to 500, there's nothing you could have done. Whereas with trading stock, you can of course get in and get out if you'd like pre-market. And so that, that's what I did. Um, I, I'm not really, I've never been good at day trading options because Options typically have bigger spreads. They're they're a bit, the liquidity is low, and so you can't really just get in and get right back out the way you can with stock. You get in, and then you you just sort of have to sit and hold it. So options are really better for kind of that swing trade strategy. Hang on, girl, go lay down, scooch. So they're better for a swing trading strategy, and that has been, I think, probably predominantly the strategy that has been. Um, uh, adopted by people on, on Reddit just to kind of buy and hold and let it let it just go. So while that is a strategy, I suppose, it and it has clearly, uh, you know, as we can see, it worked on GameStop, it has worked on many others. I'm skeptical to how long that's going to work for. It, it feels like there's a little bit too much luck in there and hope. Whereas trading like a technical breakout like this over the course of 15, 20 minutes, uh, it's a very technical setup. And, and so it either works right away or it doesn't. 
So you, you know right away whether you're going to have a, make money on it or, or you have to get out. And so this, to me, being able to read these patterns in this short time frame of a five minute chart, I, I think, um, I mean, this is what I've been doing for such a long time that to me, this feels like um, it's, there's not really a lot of hope involved. I just sort of know what I'm doing and I know what levels I'm looking at. And I know if it breaks these levels that with no upside resistance, you've got a lot of potential. So this is what I focus on. I focus on trading technical analysis and, and I apply that, I can apply that to any stock. I don't usually trade higher price stocks like this, but sometimes I will. And in this case, because the volatility was there, it was worth focusing on. So anyways, crazy volatility there on GameStop. Um, let's see, I have a, um, uh, let's see. So I've got a video here that I'll just show you. So this was, um, this was insane. So I'm, I'm, I'm in this trade here. Uh, this was in January. It's uh, just squeezed from 150. $150 all the way to 188 I mean, that by itself is a monster green candle. So I'm sitting up right now $30,000 on it. I kind of started recording a little late. It's at 4.18 in the afternoon. So we're in after hours trading right now and the stock is up 145%. And I'm currently holding 292 shares at $169.88, which puts me up $5,000, $18 a share. And I'm starting to get dialed in here to look for a trade through 200. And just watch how quickly this thing moves. So the chart now is actually moving like off the chart. The, the stock is moving off the chart because it's moving so fast. My chart hasn't uh, kind of reset to the current price. So here we have a buyer. We had a bid there at 90. So we were catching some support at, at 90. We may have resistance at 200 because it's the whole dollar. <clears throat> that would be very common. Okay, there's 92. There's a flush back down to 90 and watch that all the way back down to 85, 86. So that's like a three point flush, four point flush. So it pulls back and this is where short sellers may start to short here and go short at 185. And they're like, okay, the top is in. So if I was short, where would my stop be? The high a day right around 195. So as it starts to pull back here, technical analysis is telling me, okay, we have a red candle forming on the chart right there. It's the first red candle after this big squeeze and it has a little bit of a topping tail that's a 10 that's a one minute chart down there sorry i have two one minute charts actually all right so we're pulling back a little bit we've got 163 million shares of volume now what happens if we break through the high if we break through the high then anyone who just shorted is going to be most likely forced to cover and we're getting a short squeeze and don't forget this daily chart is powerful it looked like it was topped out and we have just broken through that 159 level and gone right up to nearly 200. So let's fast forward this a little bit more. So we pull back a little bit more down to the 80s. So we're getting what I would call right now a proper pullback. All right, so we're kind of, I dial in my chart and what I'm looking for is uh, the place where the stock starts to curl where it starts to find support and then move back up. And again, this is technical analysis. This may not be something you're gonna see a lot of people talking about on Reddit, this level of technical analysis, looking at level two, time and sales in the chart. But for me, this feels like a much um, safer way for me to understand the price action and for me to trade the stock. I, I can understand what's happening here. And just buying an options contract or even just stock and just walking away and holding it feels like I'm leaving way too much up just to chance. So right here, it feels like we're basing out a little bit. It's kind of starting to go a little bit sideways. Now that'll be confirmed if these uh, candles, the green candles start to make new highs and move back up, right? So if that starts happening, then that confirms that we're beginning to base and reverse and confirmation therefore might be a break back over $180. So if we break 180, I would expect uh, a quick move. So let's see what happens. All right, so we're at 176 here, 177. Now it's worth noting that as you get further into the day, things do sometimes slow down, especially after hours. But this is definitely a basing pattern right in this area. 
Okay, so just checking my levels, making sure there's nothing else I haven't seen. And look at this right here. All of a sudden, volume is starting to come back in. It pops back up. We hit 178, 179. So a little candle wick like that is a um, usually the um, uh, uh, what is it um, ADFN uh, market maker route. All right, so let's fast forward a little bit more. We're back to seventy eight, and are we going to get that pop back over eighty? Sometimes it feels like. Um, this momentum that once it, it we're sort of in a slack tide area here but once it starts to get rolling all of a sudden you're going to get this momentum behind it and it's just like this this wave of momentum and you all you have to do is ride that momentum so it looks to me like um the break of 179 180 is going to be a pretty uh pivotal spot So we're coming back up here. This is a one minute pullback right underneath that 179 area. We're starting to get dialed in. I'm looking for possibly the first candle to make a new high. Look at that. So let's let's not miss that. All right, back that up. Look at how, I just want you to see how fast this breaks. So why does it break so fast here? That's technical analysis. This is an apex point. The first candle to make a new high on this, on this flat top through 179, look at that, 179.50, 179.90, 180. And there's a 29,000 share seller. That's a big seller. Does it matter? There's 25, 21. Look at that. All the way up to 184, 185. Look at this resolution. So that right there, even though I didn't add on it, that by itself could have been a good trade. And now 186, 187. Now I have added, and now let's see if we get that breakthrough. Uh, no, pulled back a little bit. So now let's watch this. So I've added back here. So now we're getting this five minute setup, the first five minute candle to make a new high. And I'm looking for the break through this flat top here of 190. So I add right there. There's 191, 191, 192 coming up. Our high is around 193. Back of mind target would be, can we squeeze through 200? There's 95. There's 97. There's 204. Okay, let's back that up. Let's just watch that again. So watch this. Watch the break of 200. Again, you're just going to see how fast it breaks. So this is me applying technical analysis to a meme stock. And this is exactly what I did today uh, on Clove. And it's what I did on AMC. It's what I do on, on all of the meme stocks when I see good opportunities. I, I'm, I suppose leave, look at that, all the way up to 204. I suppose I'm leaving some money on the table uh, by not more aggressively you know, buying out of the money options contracts and things like that. But at the same, look at that, seven, eight, nine, ten thousand dollars 10,000, 10,000 right there, open P&L. Look at that. I'm in at 197, that's 208, 205, $12,000 P&L. So I start taking a little off the table into that breakout. And I believe this is uh, gonna be about $46,000 in, in total profit. There's 210. So one of the things that I've learned on games, on these stocks is not to underestimate how strong they can be, not to try to short them, to try to trade with the momentum. But when the momentum starts to shift, so I left a lot of money on the table here. I sold this too soon. I sold too much too soon. I'm still holding some, but I sold too much too soon. So when the momentum starts to shift, however, I have to be very careful at trying to buy dips or, or bounces because what I have found is that uh, because I think there's so many traders that on Reddit who just kind of like check on their phone and refresh the stock price, I think people just start kind of hitting market orders to sell. Uh, you know, they, oh, wait, hey, it's, I'm starting to lose a little money. Okay, I'll just sell here. So you sort of have these waves of sellers. 
that just continue. And some of those waves of sellers are from people that have been holding for days and days. Look at this, all the way up to 222. I left, I left so much, I left 30,000, 20 plus thousand on the table there. I mean, seriously, that, that by itself, I could have held it longer. So, uh, you know, but in any case, so this was a, a really phenomenal trade here on, um, on GameStop, all the way up there, Looks, look at that. So it drops back down. Let's see if I pull my, show my PL. I don't remember, um, back up there. So, you know, but this is, this is tricky stuff. Now it's doing another consolidation. So trading it again. Let's see. I'm just curious about where I, where I finished on it. The um, the screenshot says um, or the the label of the video is well. I don't know. It doesn't it doesn't really matter. So anyways, um, so crazy crazy move there. I think the the name of the video is forty six thousand dollars. So that's probably somewhere around there is where I finished. But forty six thousand dollars during after hour squeeze. So, you know, then we switch to something like AMC. And AMC, similarly, over the last um, few days, I mean, it, it was really strong uh, in January when we were having that big move on, on GameStop, but it wasn't as strong. It wasn't as strong. It's actually gotten its real wave of momentum uh, right here in May as things have been opening up and, and this and that. And then we've started to notice a lot of these kind of other stocks that all of a sudden catch the attention of um, of, of the Reddit uh, community. And so what it seems like the Reddit community looks for are stocks with high levels of short interest because squeezing out the hedge fund short sellers seems to be, um, you know, sticking it to the man. So stocks with high levels of short interest, uh, stocks that have been beaten up for a while, and stocks that have an options chain. It has to have options because those are that's what you need for those lottery ticket type of trades. So AMC, BlackBerry. Um, I traded BlackBerry. I trade AMC. Uh, today we've had Clove, and there's been a few others that have been kind of, um, you know, they 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 kind of gain a little traction on the forum, but they don't become really the most popular stock. So it, there could be a period of weeks where there's a few different stocks that people are really excited about, but there's not like one really obvious one. When you have one that starts to really move, then more people put more and more people focus on it, and then it, it really does become uh, the obvious one to trade because there's so much attention. Now, one of the challenges for me is that trading meme stocks. I mean, this is just a different. I've never really. This is new, so it feels sometimes that it's taking momentum away from what otherwise might have been a good quality stock or a good quality trade with good news catalyst, because this one just so many people are watching it you know like i said clove yesterday had 750 million shares of volume and so all the volume all the eyes on that stock came at a sacrifice of, of other stocks in the market that might have been really good but people didn't focus on it because there was something more exciting happening so for that reason i will focus on what's obvious and if that happens to be a meme stock the way it was yesterday and today then then it is what it is uh, but i am noticing that it's unfortunate because sometimes what i think could be perfectly good setups uh, are, are just not resolving well, and it's because of so much attention here. So anyway, so we've got Clove, um, BlackBerry, AMC, GameStop, and there were some others. Those are the ones that just are off the top of my head um, that have been sort of most recent. But, you know, long story short, my approach for trading meme stocks um, has not been to sort of jump on the bandwagon of buying these like way out of the money calls I recognize that I could have done that on like every single one of these and I guess made money because they seem to have all gone up. But on the other hand, that just seems to go against my my style of trading. I I just have a really hard time being okay with just taking this kind of hope trade where it's just like, I, I just am hoping that it works. Um, I don't know, it just doesn't seem to me to be the way I've ever traded. So. I focus on technical analysis, and and as a result, I've been doing quite well, and I'm I'm happy with that. So, there's different ways to trade these. Uh, different people certainly have um, uh, different approaches. One of the things that is kind of interesting has been the fact that some of these have become very choppy, where technical analysis, traditional technical levels that usually would work really well, uh, don't work as well in certain places. And I think that that's because 
there are so many people trading these stocks that don't even look at charts, that aren't even looking at level two. So the things that I would traditionally consider to be like the traffic signs of the market, like this is a red light, this is a green light. Now you have people that are just blown through red lights. And then you have people that are um, stopping at green lights. They just don't know. So it, it creates a little bit of choppiness. And so where I've done the best on these have been during the periods when they are just explosive. So like yesterday on GameStop, I lost 10,000 on it. And it, you know, it made a big move, but I just got in too high. And, it, and Clove was the one that more people were focused on. So GameStop wasn't super obvious at that moment and I probably should have just left it alone. So it's, it's, I'm still trying to get comfortable with how to trade them and I still have days where I do give back some profit. Um, obviously on, on GameStop, I, I did give back quite a bit. Um, but let's see, so year to date, um, I'm just curious at how much I actually am up on GameStop. So um, GameStop, $312,000. So I'm up 312,000 on GameStop this year. Um, I, you know, I can't complain about that. Now, could I have made more throwing, you know, 100 grand as some out of money options contract? Yeah, for sure. But $300,000 is uh, very good and I'm very happy with that. And that's an important reminder to be grateful for what you have and not always be comparing yourself to another person down the road because there's always someone down the road who's made more money than you unless you're Elon Musk or um, Jeff Bezos. So unless you're one of those guys, and at any time they are, it's one or the other, but there's almost always someone, except for two people in the entire world, one person that has made more than you. So you have to be grateful for what you've got. Um, you know, at the end of the day, if you take this lottery ticket trade because you're trying to prove something or do something, and then you end up losing money and you lost money on margin or you lost money that you borrowed, you're the one that's stuck with footing the bill there, you know? I mean, so you've got to live with that loss at the end of the day and you got to trade responsibly. So yes, trading is risky. My results are not typical, uh, but um, I do enjoy trading and I do enjoy uh, the volatility that we've had this year and I hope it continues. I, I don't know how long it'll continue, but I'm going to keep riding the waves and you guys uh, who are members in the community at Warrior Trading will keep watching me uh, as I'm as I'm trading in and out of these ones. They're very interesting. So I hope this has been somewhat helpful for those of you guys tuned in and I will see you guys for the next episode. All right, take care. I hope you really enjoyed that video and make sure you hit the thumbs up and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Our goal is to hit 1 million subscribers this year, but we won't get there without your help. So please, please, please hit that subscribe button.